Hey, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. As you can tell from the title, today I'm taking you back to Antigua. Consider this a curated compilation of things to do in Antigua. If you want the extended version with all of my experiences, time with family, and just all the vacation vibes, you can click over here for the extended, I think it's almost an hour long vlog. But this one is short and sweet. I just wanted to show you some of the places you need to go, the amazing adventures I had the last time I visited. This is one of the best places on the planet. I mean, I'm a little biased. I'm half Antiguan. My mom was born there. I always wonder how my grandma emigrated to cold Canada. Like, just why? I mean, I know why. She wanted a better life. Every time I go back, truly paradise. And I wanted to share a piece of that with you. So I hope you enjoy this video and let's get into it. Let's start with the one that I've never done before, rum making. If you haven't too, I highly recommend that you do. Whether you go to Antigua specifically or try one of these classes anywhere in the Caribbean, not only are you going to have a lot of fun, and depending on how early you take this class, I mean, some of those were too strong for this time of day, you're going to learn a lot along the way. They're going to distill the rum for you, and they're going to talk you through everything. You get to choose from an array of different flavors. They give you all the supplies. At first, we were really struggling with ours. So sometimes when you see with the black bit of rubber, you're gripping it too hard, it won't move. This, this one is a bit sticky though, so let me grab you guys a fresh one of these. I always feel better when someone else struggles. Is that just a me thing? Alcohol being very thin, not very dense, these alcohol meters will sink further down into that liquid. You guys will see there are two different measurements on here. One side goes 0 to 100, the other side goes 0 to 200. Now guys, the 0 to 100 side gives you a reading of your ABV, alcohol by volume, or in other words, the percentage of alcohol. Right? And then the other side, guys, the 0 to 200 is proof. Now guys, proof is a very redundant way of measuring alcohol. Early 1900s, the British Royal Navy were here in Antigua. Every day, every single soldier would receive a rum ration, which consisted of 300 mils at 75% alcohol. That is so much food to be drinking every day at work. Right? Now guys, on the off chance, somebody tried to steal some of your rum ration and mix it with water. You take your rum ration, pour a little bit onto gunpowder, and light it. If the gunpowder is still lit, it was proof that nobody messed with your rum. There's no water in it. Right? That's where the term proof came from. It needs to be 100 proof. We're going to fill up this cylinder to 250 milliliters. I like that they put that little lesson in about proof because now I know what it means. And when we put it on our label, I felt like we actually did something that day. But hey, we're still mixing a little bit and tweaking as we see fit. They gave us one-on-one -on -one instructions when needed, so it was a really good, well-rounded class. Next are the sites. I didn't do that much on this past trip because honestly, I've been everywhere on the island, but three that I had to take you this time were Fort James to start, which has a lot of history, beautiful views, and you can tell it's so serene when you're up there. Next, not so serene, actually quite eerie if you ask me, is Devil's Bridge. This has a very rich history as you'll see on the screen. It's very rough out here, but still something worth coming to. Be careful when you're out here. Shirley Heights. I have not been here in 15, ooh, 16 years actually. It's been a long time since I've been to Shirley Heights, but I had to bring you back because some of the best views of the island are from this naval base. Not only is there a lot of beautiful buildings with rich history, it's just quintessentially Antigua. I don't know what else to say. If you want to save the moment a little longer, I highly recommend eating at the restaurant. Not only does it give you more time to take in the sights, it also reimburses you for the admission of Shirley Heights, which is expensive for no reason if you ask me, but that food really makes up for it. Really, really good. Three are beaches. This is my favorite part. 365 beaches, one for every day of the year. If you are looking for peace, you've come to the right place because Antigua has a beach for everybody. Whether you want something that is calm and pristine or it's got a little bit more personality because some of those beaches 
got a lot of waves. There is something that is gonna make you feel like you've gotten your perfect Caribbean escape. Every time I visit home, even though I wasn't born there, I call it home, I try to go to as many beaches as I can. This time I went to eight or nine. The last time I went to over 20. So it depends on how much time I got and how much my family really wants to drive me around. I'll go to as many beaches as I can each trip because nothing beats the beaches in Antigua. I've been to plenty of other countries. Nothing comes close to the beauty of Antigua's beaches. What I love is how well maintained each and every one of them are. I mean, some are more rocky than others and I'm not a rocky beach girl, but most of them look like this. Number four, food. One of the biggest parts of traveling is indulging in the cuisine. Antigua has so many restaurants for being such a tiny island. We started off by going to this restaurant, which had a beautiful view and was a great introduction to this trip. The food was delicious. Service, mm-hmm, can use a little bit of work. Then we went to what was supposed to be one of the best seafood restaurants, and we thought it was the, it's all right, not the greatest seafood we had in our life. It was good, expensive, just warning you. Daesh was expensive, but it was good. If you want something that is delectable, but not expensive, very filling, but not fancy, definitely try this crepe spot in town. It wowed me. It's perhaps one of the best crepes I've had in my whole life. I've had a lot of good crepes here in Toronto and in Perry. Word spreads fast on the island because this is a not so hidden gem anymore. If you come here, book or come early because the wait is long, but it is worth it. We got the burgers and they did not disappoint. I'm not a huge burger person, but this? For those who like a little sweet treat, you can head over to this donut shop and try these. Put the wax paper in my face though. It's really, really good. But it's definitely more of a cake vibe. The icing is giving Betty Crocker. I'm gonna say this is like a donut that needed to stay in a little bit longer. Number five, another must try is heading over to the treehouse specifically on Wednesdays when they host sunset yoga. I spent about two hours before the class started just lounging on the Wi-Fi because things are a little hit and miss on the island. So having consistent Wi-Fi and Apple Pay made my day. I got two cocktails and they were strong. So I actually do not recommend getting two before you take the class, but that's what I did. So I gotta keep it real with you and just sitting and swinging slow while listening to podcasts, perfect vibe. The yoga session surprised me. I didn't expect it to be so good and challenging. Usually when I take classes abroad, they're easy and kind of boring and basic, but this, I don't know if it was just the sand or the two drinks I had, but it gave me a run for my money and I actually enjoyed it. Number six, a stay at a resort. So if you're not already staying at a resort, if you're like me and you have family, I highly recommend doing a day pass, if not an overnight stay at a resort. It just shakes things up a little bit. And it's always nice to have that experience, you know what I mean? So we headed to the Royalton and this place is nothing short of stunning. Like it's giving luxury vibes every way you turn. The service was exceptional for the most part. We're gonna get into it in a bit. Everything was very clean and hygienic. Cause you know me, germaphobe over here. The views from the room were beautiful. The beach itself was all right. Compared to all the other beaches, this one was mid. The food was better than most resorts I've been to. But of course my auntie's cooking is way better. It gives you the opportunity to have a very leisurely day or night stay. Our timing was off, so we missed the night entertainment, but the next day I woke up early to go to the gym and take a yoga class. 
This instructor was good as well. I heard her take notes of who's been on the resort for how long and I thought that was a nice touch. The gym was good. I couldn't figure out the machine, life legally blind, but I mean, I was only there for 20 minutes. Now the buffet, this needs its own video, but I'm not gonna do all that. Just look at the array of food. It's well-maintained, it was flavorful and fresh. It was everything I've been asking for the last three resorts I've been to. So I'm happy that I finally had a good experience with resort food. So good we had to go back for seconds. Of course, there are games, activities, and events, but because we didn't time things properly, we missed most of them. We wrapped up our stay by sitting by the sea and enjoying our last meal and dessert before we headed back. Lastly, number seven, live music. I wanted to give you two options, one low key and one not so low key. This first spot is perfect for those of you who want an elevated evening. You can listen to some beautiful piano music while the sun sets, eat delicious food, and have great conversation. The service here was really good as well. I'm still thinking about that tiramisu today. <laughs> For those of you who like the live and live music, this place gets lively real quick. Make your way over here on a Monday and say hi to my cousin on the keyboard while you're at it. I did not expect what I experienced, but it was the perfect send off for my trip. Things got lit real, real quick and no alcohol was involved. So that's telling you the vibes are real, real good. Those are a few of the things you can do when you visit Antigua. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you're planning on going, let me know what you've put on your list, if you've already been, what's familiar and what reminds you of your last trip. And if you're local, let me know what you love most about the island. Until next time, love and later.